Welcome back to Improvision Entertainment. I'm Hunter Munn, and I'm here to show you something a little bit different. Part Let's Play, a little bit storytelling, and just a smidgen of walkthrough, this is the story of Prince of Persia, The Sands of Time, told by yours truly and our protagonist, the future king of Persia. Most people think time is like a river that flows swift and sure in one direction. But I have seen the face of time, and I can tell you, they are wrong. Time is an ocean in a storm. You may wonder who I am and why I say this. Sit down, and I will tell you a tale like none that you have ever heard. Know first that I am the son of Sharam, a mighty king of Persia. On our way to Azad, with a small company of men, we passed through India. <coughs> where the promise of honor and glory tempted my father into a grievous error. Now, my son! Maharaja's treasure vaults lie within. Ha! See how he finds ah, like a warrior son. I think I felt regret as I gazed upon the destruction we had wrought, or at least humility at the speed with which a world can be transformed from a good world into a hell. If you think so, you are mistaken. For in that moment I thought of one thing only, the honor and glory I would bring my father by fighting like a warrior in my first battle. The prince made his way up the rubble of the bombarded outer walls of Mysore, still under attack by his father's forces. Traversing the gaps of fallen walkways, just as the agile scouts of Persia had taught him in his youth, he made his way further into the city. Already the dead were lain strewn about as the conflict escalated, but around the next corner lay the prince's first test. It was a victory without fanfare, and one he did not feel he needed to repeat. Many men that day sought to win honor and glory on the battlefield, that their king might say to them, as Khosrow said to Rustam, You are the noblest of my warriors. From the moment my sword tasted blood, I knew this would not be my way. I would win my father's praise, not by killing him by being the first to find the Maharaja's treasure room and the wonders within. Many men stood between the prince and his goal, and he would not even be slowed by them. Dodging their spears, they saw no need to give chase. Surely the guards further in could handle a single boy. <sighs> further and further in he went, until he reached a dead end. He would have to turn back and find another way. Or would he? Surely that hole would provide a much desired shortcut. The prince's grip was inhuman, though Persian, easily holding him stories above certain death as he made his way around the inner city walls closer and closer to his goal.
Through the air he flew from pole to pole. He smiled to himself as he ascended to the balcony. The men below would never even know he'd been there. Traversing the walls within was an easy task, but the prince had run out of land. Quickly kicking off from the wall, he just barely made it to the ledge opposite it. Climbing up, he pressed onward. Feeling empowered, the prince pushed himself. He skipped the floor in his next run. And there it lay, just out of reach. The Dagger of Time. There was a treasure I could carry with pride as a trophy of our victory. I could only get there. Giving his prize a closer look, the prince knew that he need only make his way around to the dagger to claim it. Since he had already traveled in clockwise, he made haste to continue his ever-closing circle, aiming to come around to the vault from the other side. The prince knew that he must avoid spiky poles. Narrow ledges and more poles. The standard defenses known to cities of the era were easily traversed by those with a cool mind. The prince could tell that the pole would strike him if he did not stop. Letting it reverse, he pressed on. From wall to ledge, the prince was sure of himself indeed. Just ahead and down below, the prince saw only chasm, a literal bottomless pit. Choosing not to look down, he knew that nine feet or nine hundred it mattered not. A fall was a fall, and he had every intention of staying along the wall. He could not fail, not when he was this close. Well, that was quite the statue, though the prince did not concern himself with the figure. He thought back to a conversation with his father instead. He'd been promised a gift for doing well in this battle, but had waved it off. Doing well against the feeble forces of India which guarded Mysore would be a gift for his father, but for him, the prince's gift to himself was just above. Time to get out. Now. The city had rumbled all around him as stones fell away from his feet. He did not know what caused such a disturbance, nor did he care. But the prince would earn the price of claiming the dagger as his own in time. Quickly, he turned back to find his father. Father, I have brought us honor and glory. <coughs> Your Majesty, you promised me my choice of the Maharaja's treasures. That dagger! Surely you won't deny the lad a souvenir of his first battle. You may have your choice of all the Maharaja's other treasures. Except that hourglass. That will make a fine gift for the Sultan of Azad when we pass through his city. And some exotic animals for his menagerie. And a few dozen slave girls. Yes, that should be enough. I want no animals or maidens harmed until I have chosen. Let it be known, King Sharaman is merciful in victory.
trust not a man who has betrayed his master, nor take him into your own service, lest he betray you too. I learned the truth of this to my sorrow, the day that we arrived in Azad as the Sultan's honored guests. My friend! My friend, your visit brings joy and honor to my poor and humble dwelling. If only you'd given me time to prepare a proper welcome. The glories of Azad are famed throughout the world. And yet, the best is yet to come. I give you the sands of time. May the friendship between our kingdoms endure as long as time itself. The sand, why does it glow? I can tell you. Inside the hourglass is a marvel that no living man has seen. Alas, only the dagger can unlock the sands of time, and it belongs to a greater one than I. A young prince, dearer to his father than all the wealth of India. Perhaps he will oblige. No! With that, sends for a Is it me to do this? Alicia Sigataha! I'll start my story from here, next time.